All right, so today we're going to continue with section 10.2 and finish it up. So this is going to be page 641, another textbook. In this lesson, we're going to talk about confidence intervals for the subtraction of two means or the difference of two means. Whenever we want to find the difference of two means and we have a standard deviation, we're going to use a T star or a T distribution. We can find it if we use this formula or we can use technology. Now, if the conditions are met where we have a random sample, it's 10% or less, 10 or less of the population, and it's normal or approximately normal. Or if it's not approximately normal, if the sample is large enough, as in 30 or more, we can actually use this formula or our calculator. If the sample isn't large enough, again, we have to see if it's normal. We have to check, plug the data in, and check to see if it's actually a normal distribution or approximately normal. If it's skewed, we actually can't continue. All right, so here's the formula again. We've got different two means with different confidence level. And, um, and this formula should be on the AP exam formula sheet. But you only need to use this formula if you choose not to use a calculator. I encourage you to use a calculator because there's a lot of places you can make errors here. So the next example shows how to construct the confidence interval for the difference of two means. So this example deals with big trees and small trees, short trees and tall trees. And we're going to construct the confidence interval with the difference of two means. The Wade Track Reserve in Georgia is an old growth forest of longleaf pines that have survived in a relatively undisturbed state for hundreds of years. One question of interest for foresters who study the area is, how do the sizes of longleaf pine trees in the northern and southern halves of the forest compare? To find out, the researchers took a random samples of 30 trees from each half and measured the diameter and the breast heights of DBH in centimeters. Here's the comparative box plots. Uh, the summary statistics from a mini plot. So looking at these box plots, it's clear that our mean is, is far away from our maximum, and it's it looks like it's skewed on the right end. And here our mean is far away from our from our minimum and a lot closer to our maximum. It also looks like it's skewed on the other, other end. So look at the data. This data looks to be something like this, kind of thin, then most of the data is down here. And this data looks like it's kind of thin, then most of the data is up here. So they're both are skew skewed. But the good thing is, though, we've already taken a sample of 30 for each of those. So it doesn't really matter that we're skewed. We can still use our t-distribution. All right, so here's the data that we actually have. I don't have my document camera with me today, so I can't show you my, my calculator screen. But I can tell you what I'm going to type in. And the first thing you may want to know is, is that difference between the populations? And look like, look at the example, it looks like it probably is. Like the median here is much lower than the median for the southern trees. Also, the bulk of the data here looks like 25, 25, 25. 75 percent of the data in the northern trees is smaller than um, the median in, in, in the southern trees. So it's clearly the trees here have a shorter length for the DDH. But let's look at it with, with the data. So the test the null hypothesis is that there's no difference between the two tree lengths, as in mean one subtract mean two is zero. I would go to this, these are the things you do if you had a calculator. You enter stat in the calculator, go over to test, look for two sample t test, go over to statistics or stats, enter the mean here, the standard deviation here, and the, the number size here, and then do it again for the southern trees and then hit the not equal to button. And when you do that, you should get a p-value. You should see that p-value is about 0 0.011, or about 1.1%. This is less than 5% on the 95% confidence interval. So we have to reject the null. What we would see is that, they're, that the difference is not zero, as in they're not the same values. So we couldn't accept that they're the same values, and we reject the null. There's clearly a difference between both of those. Now, to actually create the confidence interval, because this lesson is about creating confidence intervals, now let's do it this way. All right, so to construct a confidence interval, you can do the same thing. You can go to stat, go to test, but instead of being two sample t, um, t test, oh, t test, you're going to do two sample t interval. So you're doing an interval. Hit stats, enter the mean standard deviation as you did previously. Let's use the 95% confidence level for right now, and then let's do pooled, no and then hit calculate. When you do that, you should see this confidence interval. Well, you know what? You do it first, 
and then pause the video and plug it in and then actually take a look at where the confidence interval is. All right, so I'll just plug it in and this is what I have. All right, so I have a 99% confidence interval that the true difference between those two link, links of the leaves or the DVHs is between 19.9 centimeters and negative 2.25 centimeters. Don't get freaked out about it. it's negative. It just means one leaf is smaller than the other. We use the north to track the south, so we got a difference in the mean that was negative. So instead of sitting around zero, it's centered around a negative number. Hence, we got these negative, this negative confidence interval. So it just means one is smaller than the other. If you reversed it, we use the 34 first and subtract the other one, you have the same thing but on the opposite side. It would be positive 2.25 to positive 19.09. What's also important to note is this confidence interval does not contain zero, meaning that there's no chance, if you did it 95% of the time, uh, only about five of them will actually contain a difference that shows that the means actually had a, had a difference of zero, which, which would be unusual. So 95% of the time, you don't get a difference of zero. You get a difference of something between 2.25 centimeters and about 19 centimeters. So yes, that's our confidence interval. Now in the next example, they don't use a 99% confidence interval, I'm sorry, 95% confidence interval. They use a 90% confidence interval. So go to the data and actually answer these questions what you already know. Now, of course, the solution is already written there. But give it a shout on your own as if this was um, the free response section of the test using 90%. Again, pause the video and give it a shot. All right, hopefully you gave it a shout on your own. Here's the solution for it. They, uh, they start off with a state, and they describe what was happening, and so forth. And then they describe their state of what the means were, and they made a plan. They check whether it's random, and it was, and the size is 30 or more. Um, let's go back and read this. In that solution, they said the distribution of the DVH measurements in the northern sample is skewed to the right, while the distribution of DVH in the southern sample is skewed to the left. It appears that the trees in the, in the southern half uh, of the forest have a larger diameters, and the mean and median, the mean and median of the DVH for the southern sample are both much larger than the corresponding measures of the northern sample. Furthermore, the box plot shows that more than 75% of the southern trees have diameters that are above the northern, northern sample of the median. There is more variability in the diameters of the northern tree leaves, and we also see that. They also said that we can also see that there's a larger range, IQR. So the standard deviation for this sample is also bigger. There's no outliers. So look at them. They explain the socks, the spread, the spread, the outliers, the center, and the shape of the graph in the solution. And then they actually explain the, sta um, the steps of stating and the plan. They check to see if there was 10% rule applied. It's assumed that there's more than 300 trees in the forest. Was it random? Yep, it was random, and it took 30 or more. Was it normal? The box plots given the population distribution were not normal, but we have size of 30. We can actually continue with our T distribution. Then they actually did it. They actually did it using the formula. And the formula is conservative estimate, so it gives you a smaller value. And uh, they actually rearranged it too. They wanted to get a positive value, so they took the larger um, forest, the southern forest, to track the northern one. They got this standard deviation. I'm sorry, they got this confidence interval, which is pretty good. All right, so it's a pretty good confidence interval. But if you use technology, you just simply, simply have to say that you're using a two-sample, you're using a two-sample t-interval, and um, you can use the calculator for it. You might write out the things you're plugging in, and, um, and then you'll get something uh, closer to this. You may have had the negative version of this because you may have not rearranged it, so you had a bigger number to track the smaller one. And um, also, because they're using a, the calculator using a larger degree of freedom, it gets a wider interval. So yours may be um, bigger than what they had at first. At this point, you're ready to try example 37. Right now, pause the video and read this section. If you got the page printed out, go continue reading here. This explains what we just did with our T intervals. And you're actually ready for the check for understanding. So if you read all that, Go ahead, pause the video, and try the check for understanding section. Hope you had a chance to finish. We'll go over the key for this in class. Also, continue reading the rest of section 10.2. Just read it through on your own, and hopefully you understand enough about it to understand how to came up with these solutions. 
but continue reading the rest of section 10.2, and, and we'll continue this in class. Talk to you soon.